You will have noticed that the title of this webinar is asserting that digital dermatitis can be controlled and I'm going to focus on some of the aspects that are key to reducing case numbers and case severity. But firstly, it's important to note that if your herd is free from DD, then it is so important to avoid buying in animals, as this has been identified as the most significant risk for disease introduction. If you must buy in, make sure you inspect all cows' feet and quarantine them in separate housing and implement a preventative foot bathing regime. But bear in mind that even with every effort made, bought in animals are still a risk to a DD free herd because some lesions cannot be seen by eye and some may take weeks to develop to a visible stage. Conversely, some may progress from M0 status, so apparently uninfected, to the chronic M4 status in less than a week and catch you out. It is also thought, although very difficult to prove, that introduction of different species or strains of treponemes may cause outbreaks on farms or increase the severity of an existing disease burden. Once DD is endemic in a herd, our main aim is to reduce transmission between cows. Hygiene in the housing and foot cleanliness is important for this because we know that continual exposure to slurry makes skin more susceptible to DD infection by damaging the protective outer layers. We know from experimental infection models designed to replicate DD that skin damage greatly increases the risk of a foot developing a DD problem. It's possible that the bacteria responsible for DD can live in the slurry but research has not been able to prove this and so it is currently regarded more as a vehicle for spreading disease rather than as a definitive source of disease. When it comes to optimising housing, many of the measures that we champion for controlling mastitis also apply to the control of digital dermatitis. In fact, when looking critically at your own housing, it may help to think of digital dermatitis as a mastitis of the foot. So let's take a look now at some important aspects of housing for DD control. Here you can see a relatively narrow passageway in cubicle housing, where it's possible for slurry to accumulate to harmful depths. Automatic scrapers have to be used here to improve housing hygiene. If you have automatic scrapers on your farm, Consider how frequently they're set to run and whether it's enough to prevent slurry buildup. Preventing buildup of slurry is also important in other areas of high cow traffic, most notably the collecting yard and other areas in the vicinity of the milking parlour. Depending on where your heifers are housed in relation to the milking herd and milking parlour, you may need to consider how you scrape these areas to avoid scraping contaminated slurry towards the heifer housing. Wider passageways in cubicle housing, uh, for example 3.6 metres is recommended, will help to prevent slurry from accumulating to harmful depths. Frequent scraping is still required but as illustrated here, significant slurry contamination is less likely to occur and compromise foot cleanliness. Improving lying times by providing comfortable bedding will also improve foot hygiene, as cows spend less time standing in slurry contaminated areas. Here is an example of deep sand bedding, which is widely regarded as the best system for improving lying times. So I'm going to move on now and talk about some top tips for effective foot bathing, which is an important aspect of digital dermatitis control. There are many considerations in foot bath design, and I would recommend you use the AHDB foot, foot bath fitness test document to reassess your own practices on your farm. The important things to consider are cow flow, where and when are the cows going through the foot bath and can this be done without disrupting milking and without having to drive them through? Does the walking surface provide enough traction for safety but without damaging the feet? What are the foot bath dimensions and therefore the volume? It's very important that the products used are measured correctly each time to ensure the concentration in the foot bath is as intended. 
Cleanliness is important to ensure the product remains effective as they will not be tested ab above 20 grams per litre of organic matter contamination. I'll illustrate these points in more detail in the video. This foot bath is situated after the parlour exit. It's wide enough for two cows to pass through together, which can be beneficial for cow flow. The grooved concrete walking surface is the same as th throughout the collecting yard and parlour, so is familiar to the cows. The full length is 3.8 metres, which allows each foot to be submerged at least twice as cows walk through. The entry and the exit from the foot bath slopes, making the depth of solution 10 centimetres to the overflow at the deepest point, which is a little short of the 12 centimetres recommended to ensure the skin horn junction is covered, including at the front of the foot. But there is extra depth to prevent excessive loss of solution from splashing. The overall calculated foot bath volume is 600 litres. This farm uses formalin as the foot bathing biocide, which is a popular choice, but it is a known carcinogen and must be handled appropriately according to labelled instructions by a competent person. Here, appropriate personal protective equipment is available and of course it needs to be worn. Formalin is measured in a marked 20 litre closed container, then is added to the foot bath manually. It is possible to install pipes to fill the foot bath directly, which would avoid the risk to farm staff from handling this carcinogen. Um, but it is feasible to have a protocol that includes adequate safety precautions without going to those lengths. This video is demonstrating safe measuring of 20 litres of formalin into a closed container. This is then added to the 600 litres of water in the foot bath, giving a 3.3% formalin solution. As I've already said, products used in foot baths are tested to check how effective they are, up to a concentration of 20 grams per litre of organic matter. Beyond this level of manure contamination, it's unknown how effective these products are. Therefore, as a rule of thumb, it's recommended to drain and refill a foot bath after enough cows have been through to amount to one litre per cow of active solution. Refilling is also important because as the solution is used, the depth will decrease and the foot bath will no longer be submerging the entire hoof. Recent surveys have shown that excessive manure contamination and insufficient depth are very common shortcomings with foot bathing regimes which will impact how effective they are. Let's have a look now at some cows coming through. You can see that cow flow is good. They come through here twice a daily every day, so they are very used to this process. I've slowed the video slightly so you can appreciate that each foot gets submerged at least twice and mostly three times. You can also see the depth and how that does reach the skin horn junction despite earlier reservations about the depth. There are 260 cows coming through here twice a day, so in effect 520 cows in total. Therefore, our, our rule of thumb that we stick to at least one litre of solution per cow is easily fulfilled, so we expect the solution would remain effective. Foot bathing of heifers and dry cows is also important and often overlooked. A number of environmental factors thought to influence development of DD during first lactation have been investigated and the only thing found to make a difference was whether or not heifers had lesions prior to calving or at the time of calving. Remember lesions can develop very quickly and therefore preventative foot bathing needs to be carried out frequently in these groups. To facilitate this, foot bathing facilities for heifers and dry cows should be integral to the housing. This is an example of a heifer foot bath. The same considerations apply as for foot bath design for cows. This foot bath here is shorter than ideal at just two metres and the depth, at least on paper, is, uh, is too shallow at eight centimetres. Having said that, if we have a look at some of the heifers coming through, 
You can see that in this case their feet still do get submerged twice and the skin horn junctions are covered. Hopefully this video so far has given you a few ideas on how to assess your current housing management and foot bathing regime to improve digital dermatitis control on your farm. I'm now going to talk about hygiene during foot trimming which is a relatively new area under investigation as a control point for spread of DD. Research has identified lack of hygiene during foot trimming as a risk factor for increased digital dermatitis prevalence in herds. Treponemes have been frequently identified on trimmer gloves and hoof knives and recent research has shown that treponemes can be cultured from hoof knives after trimming especially where contact has been made with a DD lesion for treatment. Treponemes can survive on hoof knife blades for at least two hours. A survey of farmers, veterinary surgeons and foot trimmers carried out in 2019 showed that less than half of operators consider hand or hoof knife hygiene during foot trimming. University of Liverpool researchers and AHDB Dairy have developed a hygiene protocol to try to help reduce the spread of DD during foot trimming. This video demonstrates how to use the hygiene protocol. Make sure you're wearing clean gloves and ensure that hoof knives are free from visible dirt prior to foot trimming. Foot knives should be submerged in disinfectant for 20 seconds before use. This cow was seen primarily for treatment of the M4 lesion. So as you can see, there isn't a great deal of tri trimming required. To treat the lesion, we need to remove the dead scab that is covering it, as we know that the treponemes live a bit deeper down in the skin, and we need our topical treatment spray to come into contact with them directly. We know that treponemes can be cultured from hoof knives after trimming of infected cows in 5% of cases and where contact has been made with the lesion itself, treponemes can be cultured in 42% of cases. This tells us that hoof knives have very high levels of contamination with treponemes in this setting. To prevent transmission of treponemes to the next foot, clean both your gloves and hoof knives in soapy water to remove visible dirt. Drying knives and gloves with clean paper towel will also help to remove visible dirt. These steps will ensure that the disinfectant remains effective. Return your hoof knives to the disinfectant for at least 20 seconds before the next use. It might be helpful to use alternate pairs of knives for each foot to ensure adequate disinfectant contact time. 2% Vercon, 2% sodium hypochlorite and the iodine-based disinfectant FAM30, used at a 1 in 100 concentration, have been shown to be effective for this use. So in summary, this video has hopefully challenged you to think about a number of ways in which you could improve digital dermatitis control on your farm. We've looked at the risks of buying in and how best to mitigate them if this is unavoidable. We've taken a look at housing hygiene and how to avoid slurry buildup, which can be responsible for damaging the foot skin and for spreading the disease. We've covered some tips on how to check and optimise the foot bathing regime. And finally, I've discussed the emerging importance of good hygiene during foot trimming and recommendations for best practice. Thank you for your attention. Roger has a few more messages for us now and then we will be able to take your questions.